Yo, what is up guys, Oscar over here with a new video. I apologize for the delays that I'm trying to get used to the Mac and um, knowing when when the, when the recording starts. But, back again with a new video. This is talking about Real Madrid La Liga, Match Day 25, preview and analysis and predictions uh, against Alaves. So let's go ahead and let's get started and talk about this. Um, so it's a bounce back game. For Real Madrid, uh, now coming off of the disappointment uh, against uh, PSG, they also you know uh, need to get healthy. I don't know if Karim Benzema is going to be healthy. I honestly wouldn't play Karim Benzema in this game, to be honest. Uh, Alaves, now don't get me wrong, they're at the bottom of the table. And if this was a healthy Real Madrid, I would say Real Madrid would be able to smash them. But with an injured... Uh, squad missing players here as well. I don't know. I honestly think that Real Madrid is consider in rotating in guys that, in, in this game. Um, just to give some other guys rest. Don't you know force Karim Benzema to play as much just because you know he was just awful on Tuesday. Couldn't get anything done. Vinicius Junior was awful. Basically, the whole team is awful. So let's see if they can bounce back. But Carlo Ancelotti has named his squad for for the matchup. So. It's, at least it's going to be a home game. It's going to be in Santiago Bernabeu, so that's good. Real Madrid get to play at home and see if they can bounce back at home. So Courtois, Lunin, Diego composed the goalkeepers, defenders, Carvajal, Militao, Alaba, Vallejo, Nacho, Marcelo, and Ferland Mendy will be a part of the you know our, the defensive squad there. Midfielders, Coros, Modric, Casemiro, Valverde, Lucas Vazquez, Dani Ceballos, Isco, and Camavinga. Forwards... Number seven, Benzema, Asensio, Jovic, Bell, Vinicius Jr., Rodrigo, and Mariano. So we got a full squad yet again. Uh, but here are some reports that are interesting that Carlo Ancelotti's job may be on the line here soon. Now, I already spoke about that. I don't think it's a good move for that clown to put his put um, Carlo Ancelotti you know, spot on the line here because Carlincho Delotti has done nothing wrong. You know, he did get disappointing results recently, but it's not like Zinedine Zidane who literally had disappointing results last year from September all the way three months straight. It's not like that. You know, uh, Ancelotti has had disappointing results. They haven't lost... Uh, aside from the PSG game, they haven't lost big games at all, so I, I don't know. Um, but we'll see what Carlo Ancelotti comes up with. There is a rumor that he is l intending to potentially use Eduardo Camavinga and uh, Valverde uh, to to freshen up the midfield to get get more of a young a, a youth presence out there, uh, you know, speedy out there because we know that Valverde is speedy. And we know that Camavinga can uh, bring that, you know, defensive quality that Casemiro brings. But here's my predicted line. I don't think that Real Madrid or Carlo Ancelotti is going to bring any changes here. So I honestly think that the defense is going to be back to way, the way it was. Carvajal, Militao, Alaba, uh, Ferlimendi, Kroos, Modric, Casemiro, the, the deadly three. And then the upfront attack of Vinny, Benzema, Asensio. That's that's my predicted lineup. Who know? You know, I don't know if Ancelotti is gonna want to give Benzema a rest to start the game. So maybe put Jovic or he. I guess he likes Asensio in that false number nine role. Aside from putting in Jovic, maybe put in um, number seven. Or Bell as that false number nine. Who knows? But that's in the case that Benzema doesn't start. But because Carlo Ancelotti likes to push Benzema and Benzema wants to play, I see Benzema starting, no questions asked. So, like I said, it's an important game for Real Madrid to bounce back after that disappointing result in Paris. Uh, the 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 media catching up with with Ancelotti and with um, what's the dude's name. Uh, Florentino Perez, the clown. Florentino Perez, obviously not being happy with the result, but you know you get what you get, man. Like I, 
he's he's exa- exaggerating a lot with the with him saying he's not happy with Ancelotti. He's thinking of firing Ancelotti for Pochettino. And I do want to talk more on that. Like, what's so great about Mauricio Pochettino? He has not won a trophy in any of his clubs. He had, didn't win a trophy with Tottenham Spurs. And he didn't win a trophy with... And he didn't win last year's trophy with PSG. Granted, he came in late. Um, so he didn't le- win League One, you know, the French League, whatever. And then he got beat in the semifinals. So what's so great about it? What's so great about thinking about bringing in Pochettino? Like, really? Uh, no. I think it's it's time to, um, you know, give Ancelotti the wake-up call. Tell him, hey, you got to make better decisions. But don't. Say, I'm going to fire you because, let's be honest, like, your dream of getting Pochettino is what? When he's like, when he would be a, a hot topic. But, you know, here are some quotes that Ancelotti has said um, regarding Alaves. Alaves is saying that Alaves are in a great form. They have good pace and a solid identity. So, you know, he's giving praise there. Um you know, to Alaves, and Alaves, they're trying to, you know, stay out of the rele- relegation zone, I think they are either 18th or 19th, something like that, I think they're 18th or 19th in the table, so they're trying to stay out of the relegation zone, this is also what, we've, we've, we'll be up against a team who are enjoying a good spell of form, have great pace and a solid identity, it is so odd a time for us, because we're coming off the back of a of a painful defeat, and we are aware that we didn't perform well. Well, you didn't perform well because your team, you decided to play players who are fit, and Vinicius Jr., Ferlamendi, and Dani Carvajal were trash. So, don't give me that excuse. Um, crucial point of La Liga, we got to take advantage, obviously. Real Madrid need to win this game to, you know, stay clear of Sevilla. Because Sevilla is literally breathing down their necks with four, you know, down four points. So I feel like Real Madrid slip up and Sevilla win this weekend. Then Sevilla, you know, will be down two points and they still got to play Sevilla. Real Madrid has still got to play tough opponents. Uh, Barcelona got Atletico Madrid out of the way. So I feel Real Madrid have to have to face Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, Sevilla. Real Sociedad and Betis, if you want to put Betis in that conversation, because Betis right now in third place. So, um, here's what he had to say about picking the players. He said, everyone is in good shape. You know, take that as you will. I honestly don't think everyone's in good shape, but anyway. I'll try to do the best in the best I can to pick the right squad, uh, right players for each game. Look, man, you got to pick the right players for each game. And know the scenario and not wait too long. This is what I'm noticing about Carlo Ancelotti. Is that Carlo Ancelotti waits too long to make substitutions. If things are right within 50, 50 hour minutes, that's when you need to make changes. Not the 70th minute. Not when there's 20 minutes to game. 20 minutes to go in the game. So lacking goals. Here's a question he asked about. Uh, here he was asked a question about lacking goals. We're assessing the issue and we have to be more clinical. But we're getting back our main striker in Karim Benzema, who has scored a lot of goals and set up several too. He was touch and go for PSG, but he's fine now, and he'll help us in this regard. So we'll wait and see if those true if those words ring true tomorrow. Uh, because then I'll look back at that quote and say, "Really, Karim Benzema's at his best. We'll have to, you know, why didn't he participate enough in making the score um, in scoring goals?" The squad. I have a full squad, which I already went over. Um, you know, final stretch of the season. If you want anyone who's ready to play, I have to pick and and ele- pick and eleven. I mean, pick the eleven. The key thing is to have everyone in good shape. They have the difficult task of picking the best, and I try to do that as well as I can. So, like I said, we'll have to wait and see what happens here. He went on to talk about the Champions League. We have to be honest. We didn't play very well. At least he's acknowledging that. We usually play the ball out from the back uh, brilliantly, but we had a poor night. So we'll have to wait and see what has to say. And he was talking about how he 
also needs to improve. Um, he's not too concerned, but I know the quality how players have and personalities to come through through this. So he's speaking about the players who you know know that they failed their coach, failed the team. So let's let's see what happens here. Crit- you know, he spoke about the criticism. Criticism going around at the moment is justified, but we played poorly in Paris. I'm the greatest critic, so the approach wasn't one I take responsibility for that. Criticism must be justified, understood, and you have to learn from it. Often they are fair and they make me reflect, though sometimes it's just silly things. Criticism is great at times. It's very well welcoming, or it's welcomed. I have to. Sp- I have spoken to the president and other executives. They feel the same as we do, and it's a painful one. I think we're ha- honest. We didn't give a good account of ourselves, and that's what hurts the most. The result, not the main concern, but we have can turn it around. Uh, one. One to zero isn't too bad. That's the best thing to come out of the game. Okay, so obviously it was talking about the criticism there. Like I spoke earlier, you know, there's already whispers of him being, you know, uh, sacked, you know, being criticized for putting out players who are hurt. You know, he's, you know, taking ownership that maybe it wasn't the best scenario, but, you know, it wasn't everyone's night is what he's saying. So I guess I'm okay with that. But... Um, me personally, like I said, this is going to be a measuring stick. If Real Madrid come out and lay a goose egg, draw, you know, aren't competitive tomorrow, then I'm always going to say, look, this team, you know, is, it's peaked. It's, you know, they were overhyped in, in September, October, November. They, they finally, you know, found ways to crack. So, you know, tomorrow is a measurement game for me, in my opinion. Anyways, um, alright, I guess it's time for score predictions, so I gotta give, I'm gonna give Real Madrid the win here, give it to me, 2-1, to one. they're gonna go up 2-0, to zero, and then they're gonna give a goal up in the second half, but I say 2-1 to one, Real Madrid wins this, to silence the critics, put a band-aid on the wound for now, um, trying to repatch that injury, repatch everything, but I think that this needs to be a positive step. But already, y'all, that'll do it for this video. Make sure you guys, if you're new, you hit that sub button uh, on my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video with friends and family. Comment because I'd like to know your thoughts. Until then, guys, keep it real. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.